morning. Good morning, everyone. I um, want to apologize. We have had some technical difficulties this morning um, with our system. So uh, hoping that you guys are, are there and uh, that everything is okay. We're just gonna continue on with um, our service. And uh, yeah, so I'm Pastor Deborah and um, uh, want to welcome you to Mountain Creek this morning. Uh, I'm praying that your Sunday is off to a good start and um, yeah, that we're just gonna go ahead and, and pray and get ready to worship or you know, hear what God has to say to us this morning. Amen? All right. Uh, gracious God, thank you for this day that you have blessed us to be a part of. Uh, your mercy, mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And so today, God, we just ask that you would have your way in this service, um, that you would say what you wanna say, that you do what you wanna do, that you would move how you wanna move. And God, there are no coincidences uh, in the world today. Um, I, I believe that the message today that you have for your people is, is right along with what we have been uh, dealing with and, and what's even recently come up with this whole challenge of getting started this morning. You are faithful, God. So have your way today. Um, bless those who are sick and shut in. Um, be with them, I pray. Comfort, encourage heal, deliver, have your way uh, in their lives and in the lives of those who are under the sound of my voice this morning. We love you and we pray all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm just going to adjust my screen just a little here. Yeah, that feels better. All right. So, um, this morning, I would like to share with you uh, a word from God that I believe, again, it seems like everything that I've been sharing lately is going al along with um, the various uh, challenges that we've been having. And so um, if I were to give my message a title today, it would be Wrestling for the Blessing wrestling for the blessing. And so when we think of uh, wrestling, right? Uh, we think in terms of strength, uh, endurance, um, weakness, struggle, and then wonderment, meaning wondering how this match will end. <laughs> and so um, the mere idea of wrestling with God himself seems impossible. I mean, God is God. God is almighty. Um, God is all powerful. All um, He knows all. And, um, and he's everywhere all the time. So the thought of wrestling with God um, could make you wonder, you know, like who would even consider taking a challenge like that. Yet there are times that we wrestle with God. And a lot of times when we do wrestle with God, we don't even know that that's what we're doing, right? We're, we're having a wrestling match and we don't know. The fact that God would take the time to even wrestle with us, right? Because, you know, God's all powerful. It's not like we can overcome him. <laughs> he, he can, we can, we can beat him in a wrestling match. Um, but the mere fact that he takes time to allow us to wrestle back and forth with him um, actually shows his love, his care, and his desire for us to be better creations. He makes us new. 
Uh, many times when we come out the wrestling match, we've learned and, uh, and accomplished and acquired more than we could ever think or imagine. So um, today we're gonna hear Jacob's story about how he wrestled with God, um, God in the form of, and today I'll use the term man, because that's what the, the scripture says in the version that I read. Um, but prior to the encounter um, of, of him having this wrestling match with God, he was actually in fear of his life. Uh, he was with his wives and their children and his, his uh, family um, and those that worked and served him and all of that kinds of stuff. So they were on their way in a caravan, as it were, uh, and he knew he was going to meet up with his brother Esau, who he had betrayed um, in different instances prior to this time. So he was getting ready to come across his brother and he was in fear of his life. So, but before he met up with him, God did a work, right? Have you ever committed an act in your life that you, something that you've done that has come back to bite you, right? And, you're, and it, it actually can put you in a state of fear of not really knowing what to do next because now you've got to face this issue that maybe you were at fault uh, at the time that it occurred and now here you are um, and you have to deal with it. But then God in his gracious way, in his grace and his mercy and in his um, omnipotence and in his knowledge um, has an encounter with Jacob before that even happens. So we're gonna start with uh, Genesis 32. Uh, the verses are 22 through 31. And we're not gonna, after this scripture, we may, we'll have one more, but we don't have a whole lot today as far as scripture, but we have a lot to share. So Genesis 32, 22 through 31 says, that night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants and his 11 sons and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, what is your name? Jacob, he answered. Then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, please tell me your name. But he replied, why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel saying, it is because I saw God face to face and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. So I think it's so interesting, um, some of the parallels as we read this scripture that, I mean, this passage of scriptures that the uh, person that the man, the form, um, or maybe an angel, um, asks Jacob, what is your name? What is your name? So in the midst of all this happening, sometimes God will ask us questions that may seem totally like not applicable to what's going on in our lives. We're busy focused on the wrestling match or whatever we're trying to attain or receive. And then God will stop us and ask us a question. What's your name? And it's like, hmm? And of course, Jacob ans answers. But then Jacob in turn asks the question, what's your name? And the man who is again in the form of 
of whatever God has put him in. God is, is present in this person. It says, well, why do you ask my name? And it makes me think about the time when Jesus was going up before the uh, council and, um, or no, not, he wasn't going before the council. Jesus was having um, an encounter and he was asked, what is your name? And he says, um, my name is I am. <laughs> I am that I am. That's a powerful statement. So when God asks us certain questions, there's always a reason behind it. So Jacob was alone when, it, when this started. It was night. He wrestled until daybreak. That's a long wrestling match. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes in life, we have long wrestling matches. Yet he wanted to hear from God. He was wrestling it through. I got to get my blessing. I need to know what what you have for me, God. He got rid of all the noise and the distractions. Sometimes that's what we need to do. Sometimes we're in a place where there's too much noise, too much going around, too many distractions. But Jacob was alone and he wrestled until daybreak. And we understand that this man was a representation of God. So in wrestling, we look at the whole context of wrestling. Wrestling is a sport that is practiced in various styles. There's two competitors and there's a hand-to-hand -hand combat system and a set of combat sports involving grappling. Uh, there's techniques of grappling, fighting, throws, takedowns, joint locks, Imagine somebody locking up your joints, ouch, pins, get pinned down and holds. All of this is part of wrestling. It involves forcing an opponent to touch the ground with some part of their body um, other than their feet and usually forcing them into a certain position. And it's usually on the back. So people get in wrestling, it's pinned on their back basically or holding him in a position for an extended period of time. Um, and then they tap out or the, the whoever's uh, observing the wrestling match determines the winner. So wrestling techniques have been incorporated in martial arts, combat sports and military systems. And I never thought about that when I was studying about wrestling, that all these, um, different venues or avenues, people learn how to wrestle. So it's been proven statistically that the wrestler who exercises the first takedown in a match will usually win 85 to 90% of the time. So I just wanted to think about the whole concept of Jacob wrestling. I mean, there was some pinning, some grappling that was whew, a lot going on all night long. So Jacob, he wouldn't let the man go until he blessed him. And we know the man represented God and dislocated Jacob's hip. Jacob's relis, relentless pursuit of blessing caused him to fight against God. And so I asked the question, how many times do we seek God for a blessing, for answers, so we're, we're looking for the blessing, we're looking for answers, but we're fighting against God. How many times have we done that? You know, I know I have. Jacob's resistance to God caused him to miss the point that God himself was Jacob's blessing. God himself was his blessing. God is our blessing. The man could see that Jacob was not receiving the lesson, what God wanted for him, the lesson or the gift or whatever God has for, had for him, whatever God has for us. Sometimes we don't even see it. And so it took Jacob, him, this man to, to wrench his hip, to basically take it, dislocate it, and take it out of socket. A hip, ouch. 
So if we think about the hip, where's the hip located, right? It's pretty much in the center of our body. You know, um, it is constructed to hold us up. It's pivotal, it's pivotal. Once the hip is injured, then we are out of commission as we were. It affects our whole body. We will not walk, we will not run, <laughs> We will not function as we did before if our hip is out of place, if it's out of socket. The hip socket and the muscles around it are some of the strongest in the human body, right? They're strongest and they support the femur, which is one of the strongest bones in the body. So once that hip is out of place, there are, you, you'll, you'll not be the same <laughs> How about that. So the question is why wrestle with God? Why, why wrestle with him? Jacob had been missing the affirmation that he wanted from his father, right? There was a, a family history of Jacob who had a twin brother, Esau, and uh, Esau was the favorite of the father. So Jacob's whole life, he was always trying to, to get his father's approval. And he was constantly um, dealing with this issue. So I asked the question, how many, for you, how many times have you found yourself seeking someone's approval in order to, to feel like you're validated? What kind of uh, means do you take in order to show, hey, I'm here and I'm important, right? I wanna be loved, I wanna be accepted. Sometimes we want to show a person, um, want a person to like us by trying to measure up, as they say, to their expectations. But God gives us all the affirmation that we need. I remember when I was, um, this was probably, yeah, maybe 20 some years ago, maybe 20 years ago or more. I remember that I was really wrestling with an issue. I didn't realize I was wrestling with this issue in my life. And I was just wrestling. I mean, I was struggling. I wanted, I was, I was, I was praying to God and, and I was really longing for this. And I was, I would cry and I would, pray and and then I would have times of fits and I just was really struggling and I didn't know I, I really I wasn't really thinking about the fact that I was wrestling with God and how I came to a resolution to tell you how good God is is thank God he didn't dislocate my hip but someone had a dream about me that I believe God gave them. And they shot straight from the hip and basically said, you have been struggling with this issue for a while now. And basically what they said is God saying, let it go, let go of it. And yes, the, the reality of it I felt relieved, but I also felt like, wow, that was a straight, that was straight. <laughs> there was no way of getting around it. I would, I would have liked to have to get around it, but God said, no, you're gonna, we're going to deal with this right here and now through this person. And they don't know to this day, I, I, I'll never forget it. And I'm very grateful for it but it helped me stop wrestling, let it go. So when Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me, the man asked what your name was, what is your name? And it's always amazing how God asked those questions that seem irrelevant, but God asked those questions to what? Number one, benefit us. God is letting Jacob know the man you have been, 
you will not be anymore. Amen. You, I created you to be something more, something else. He also asks the questions because he wants us to what? Find our identity in God. Find your identity in God. And then he sometimes will ask us the questions or allow us to wrestle with this difficulty to find his purpose for our lives. What is God's purpose for our lives? What does he have planned for us? Jacob was approaching his brother, fearing for his life and the lives of his family and those that were with him. But God had a whole new plan. He had a different purpose for all that was coming. Hallelujah. And then guess what? God always wants us to win. He always wants us to win. You think about um, kids when they're wrestling with uh, someone like an older sibling or a parent or whatever, and that older person could pin them, flatten them out in, in, in an instance, but God said, the, excuse me, but the parent says, uh, oh, you got me. <laughs> God always wants us to win. Amen. So not only did God give Jacob the affirmation he had been longing for, so that approval, he gave him a physical reminder, amen, as it were, of the blessing that God would stay with him for the rest of his life. Sometimes the blessings don't come in the form in which we think they should or could, but God will give us a blessing that will be with us for the rest of our lives because his desire for us is for us to be winners, for us to win. And then not only does he bless him, he changes his name. Jacob means behind, heel, trickster, supplanter. Israel, which was now his new name, means contends with God. Jacob was now the one who contended with God and survived. God will help us survive, y'all. He'll bring us through. We might have to contend for a little while to learn and to grow and to develop and become a new creation. But once we've gone through that, we have survived and, and we are victorious. We win. Amen. So I'm going to uh, read the scripture, 1 Corinthians 9.25 NIV. It says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not, that will not last. Excuse me. They do it to get a crown that will not last, that, but we get a crown that will last forever. So the crown that we get is not just temporal, basically. It's one that will last forever. That's the whole purpose of, of uh, when we're contending and working toward God's will in our lives. In this story, we see God simulating weakness in order to bless Jacob, basically, because God has all power. And we also see this example on the cross. Jesus took beatings, shame, mockery, insults, and so much more to the point of death so that we would have eternal life. He was not overcome, but he overcame by laying down his life. Amen. So as I conclude, I want to read a, a part of a poem and then a quote, and then I'll ask you a few questions. And this poem is by Rainier Maria Rilke. It's called The Man Watching. And the latter part of the poem says, how small that is with which we wrestle. What wrestles with us, 
how immense. Were we to let ourselves, the way things do, be conquered thus by the great storm? We would become far reaching and nameless. What we triumph over is the small and the success itself makes us small. The eternal and unexampled will not be bent by us. This is the angel who appeared to the wrestlers of the Old Testament. When his opponent's sinews in that contest stretch like metal, he fills them under his fingers like strings making deep melodies. Whomever this angel overcame, who so often declined the fight, he walks erect and justified and great from that hard hand, which as if sculpting nestled round him. Winning does not tempt him. His growth is this, to be deeply defeated by the ever greater one. And then I was reading a quote by one of the profs of biblical studies from Seattle Pacific University named Sarah Koenig. And she said, certainly we all experience times when we feel as if we were wrestling with God. And many of us are marked by the wounds we have sustained from our struggles. And this text, meaning what I just read, reminds us that God is wrestling with us and we grow in that process. So a few questions to consider. Um, this is, you can ponder on these and you can also talk about them with our Going Deeper group. Uh, number one, when have you found yourself wrestling with God? I just thought of, I, I didn't even really, I, I had forgotten about that um, experience I had years ago when someone had the dream. I believe God gave them about me and I was definitely wrestling. When have you found yourself wrestling in a match with God? How do you know whether or not you're wrestling with God is number two. How do you know? You know, is it, is it just something that you're kind of going through or you look, you realize, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm wrestling with God. How do you know? And then where might you find the blessing in the struggle? Where might you find the blessing in the struggle? That's number three. And then number four, has God given you a new name, a new identity? Think about that. Has God given you a new name, a new identity? Hmm. So that's what I have for you today. There, there uh, is no call to action this week. Um, we will have going deeper today. Uh, at 1115. So if you would like to be a part of that group going deeper, um, the discussion group, then um, feel free to join us. And if if you want to um, connect and you don't know how just post it on your um, in your posting there. Um, and ask to send me link. Okay. And then Thursday, um, we have our connection group with Sharon and Darren. And there's a standalone biblical topic, resources. Um, the meeting is every other week at 7 p.m. And everyone is welcome. If you ever have any questions about any of this, um, please visit uh, mountaincreek.org. Um, and then just a little further note, this is just my, from me, just to say that um, one of the things uh, we had, I had mentioned that our last Sunday will be June 26th. Um, this will be the last Sunday for Mountain Creek. And just wanted to let you know that if there is a free Methodist church that you are interested in being uh, a part of, um, you can certainly reach out to me uh, my email is pastor at mountaincreek.org. That's pastor at mountaincreek.org. 
um, and I will have some paperwork, and not a lot of paperwork, but an official um, transfer for you, I can actually uh, provide, okay? Um, and then again, remember that we will continue with the, once we are, we close, we'll have our prayer group on um, the first Monday of every month and continue with the, the connection group, the Bible study every other Thursday, okay? All righty. Well, I pray that you have a fabulous week. I'm so glad that you were here today and I pray God's blessings upon you and your loved ones. And I pray that God would answer your prayers and that if you are in a wrestling match, as it were, that you would um, come out victorious, okay? God bless you. And I'll see you again soon.